how would you like to solve some complex exposure problems? Let's get started. All right, what do we have on the board today? We have two techniques. Technique A, consisting of 70 kbp, 200 ma, 0.25 seconds, an 8 to 1 grid, and 40 inches SID. Below that, technique B features 80 kbp, 100 ma, mystery seconds. We don't know the time station here. No grid, and 60 inches SID. Two very different techniques. So what is our challenge? Our goal, our objective is to determine what time setting we can plug in here in order to ensure that both of these techniques will produce identical IR exposures. How can that be? Well, there's more than one way to get the same result. And in this case, we can get the same result with two very different techniques. As long as we put the right exposure time in here, everything hinges on that. How do we get here? That's the point of this video. How do we arrive at this unknown? How do we find that? Before we do, let's talk a little bit about the 15% rule. Quick review. An increase in KVP by 15% results in doubling the mass, or the equivalent result of doubling the mass, correct? A decrease in KVP by 15% will give you the same result as if you reduced your mass by half, okay? A little recap of the 15% rule. It's important you understand this as we start to solve this problem, because what we're going to do is start over here with KVP as our first step. And before I begin with KVP, let me just give you a, a brief explanation of what our goal is here with this problem. Our goal is to work through this problem and compensate for each change, for each difference in these two techniques. And as we do that, our mass is going to evolve and change along with us as we work through the problem. We'll compensate for KVP, we'll compensate for this grid, we'll compensate for distance. And as I said, as we do, our mass will evolve. And what mass is that? Well, we really only know one mass value with this problem, right? We don't know the mass here. It's unknown to us because we're missing the time. But we do know this mass. We've got to multiply 200 ma times 0.25 seconds first to get it, but we can do that quite easily, right? 200 times 0.25 is 50 mass. So we're going to start with KVP insofar as our compensation and how we compensate for one factor. Uh, this is where we're going to start, but the idea is as we do these compensations, this mass is going to continue to evolve and change, okay? So let's get rid of this first, and then we'll start off on this merry road of confusion that will hopefully lead us out of the woods into a beautiful meadow of clarity and understanding. All right, let's get started. KVP. We're going to go from 70 to 80 KVP, right? That's about 15%. So if you increase your KVP, if you go up by 15%, what do you have to do to your mass to ensure everything stays the same in regards to IR exposure? Well, if the KVP goes up by 15%, we have to cut our mass in half if we want it to stay the same. Because if we went up by 15% in KVP and didn't adjust our mass, there would be a lot more IR exposure, correct? We don't want that to happen. We want to keep things bouncing along and keep them the same, right? We want these two techniques, technique A and technique B, to produce the same result. So every time we compensate for one of these factors, we've got to adjust the mass along with it, okay? So we go up from 70 to 80 kvp. What's that do to our mass? We have to cut it in half. 
So, let's put 50 mass down here, because that's what we're going to start with. Again, the only mass we're given, the only mass we know about. Starting with KVP, 70 to 80 KVP. That's an increase by about 15%. To keep everything copacetic, everything the same, we're going to have to adjust this. We're going to cut it in half to 25 mass. Now, at this point, 50 mass is ancient history. Don't even think about it again. Now we're working with 25 mass as we move forward in the problem. To keep track of what we've done, we can cross out the KVP. We're done compensating for that. Let's move forward with the new mass that we're dealing with. Let's compensate for this grid change. We're going from an 8 to 1 grid to no grid. What do we do in this case? Well, as you know, an 8 to 1 grid has a conversion factor of 4. So, if we were to strip away that grid, take it away, what do we have to do to our mass? Again, to ensure the IR exposure stays the same. We're compensating for taking the grid away. We remove the grid. We've got to divide our mass by 4. Right? By the conversion factor of 4. 8 to 1 grid gets taken away. We're going to have to divide our mass by 4. 25 divided by 4 gives us 6.25 mass. We can cross out the grid portion of the problem. We're done. We've compensated for that. This is the new mass we're moving forward with, 6.25 mass. Isn't this awesome? There's not much else left here, right? We're going to leave this little section alone till the very end. Not much we can do with this right now. We've got to compensate for this distance change. We're going from a 40-inch SID to a 60-inch SID. So our distance is increasing. This is a new mass law problem. That's what you were thinking, wasn't it? You were like, a new mass law. It's true, new mass law problem. So let's put that together. As you recall, the new mass law is mass 1, which, remember, now we're working with 6.25. It's mass 1, 6.25. Over mass 2, we don't know mass 2 yet. That's supposed to be an x. Apologies for that. Mass 1 over mass 2 is equal to distance 1, 40 inches, over distance 2, 60 inches, squared, right? Boop, boop. So let's do that right now. 40 squared, 1,600, 60 squared, 3,600. Isn't that lovely? We're going to multiply 6.25 by 3,600. When we get that, we're going to then divide by 1,600. Would you like to know what those numbers are right now? Let's just do it for fun. I happen to have a handheld computer, commonly known as a calculator. Let's do that real quick. 6.25 multiplied by 3,600 okay, equals 22,500. That's a large number. Divided by 1,600 gives you 14.06. 14.06 mass. Isn't that lovely? It's wonderful, isn't it? Guess what happens to this? Gone. We don't care about that anymore. It's not relevant. We've compensated for our distance change. Now our working mass is 14.06. We're ready to solve the mystery at this stage in the game. And let's do that. Let's do that. We need some room here, so let me do that real quick. To solve this mystery, it might be helpful for you to utilize this little formula. This handy dandy little circle that can help you quite a bit in a situation like this. We're missing the time station, correct? We need to know how many seconds are going to plug in here. So we're going to utilize this formula to help us get there. What do we know? We know the mass now, 14.06. 14.06. Do we know the MA? If you darn tootin', 100. Let's put that in there. So, what do we do? 14.06 divided by 100 will give us the seconds. And what 
are the seconds? What are, let's do it right now because I'm so excited. You know what? We don't need the calculator. We don't need the calculator because I have it written down already in front of me. The seconds are 0.14. If you were to divide 14.06 divided by 100, you would come up with 0.14 seconds. Let's get this x out of here. It doesn't belong. Now we have 0.14 seconds. What does all this mean? I'll tell you what it means, and it's an incredible thing. It basically means if you set your KVP at 70, and you selected 50 maths, right? Used an 8 to 1 grid, and set your SID at 40, and took an exposure. Beep! Then, you put another IR in place, and started over, and changed your KVP to 80, used 14.06 mass, which is 100 times 0.14 seconds, used 14.06 mass, no grid, and moved your tube back to 60 inches, made the exposure, beep! Guess what? Both of those IRs would have the same density slash IR exposure. Isn't that incredible? And that's it. So, if you're confused, watch it again. Sometimes if you watch in slow motion, it makes more sense. But not really. Alright, have a nice day. We'll see you in class.